and threatened if I don't get started like right away, get to the point, <laughs> and keep us on task. So you will be able to rewatch this on the video again if you missed the beginning. So tell me what's going on. You won't let me scroll in fat closer. Oh, that's okay. We don't need to scroll. All right, so um, on we're playing bingo tonight as the teachers go around and they, they introduce their samples to you. The way that the bingo works is as they're explaining, if you hear the words that are on your card and you go to the Facebook website and, and not website, excuse me, it's Facebook link and print one that one off that's on the page. If you will mark off every word you hear that's spoken, and if you get a bingo that goes diagonal, across, up, down, you will bring it in or even post the word um, bingo on the comments to get 10% off your next purchase. We just want to make this engaging and fun and interactive and also give you an opportunity to see the samples that are in for the next quarter. And um, before we get started, I just want to tell you all thank you for supporting us and just being here. And um, we are having a blast. This is our third quarter and just thank you. So Ginger, are you ready? Because we're going to start talking about social activities and opportunities. So you social. can go first. All right. So um, starting this Saturday, um, and it will be following after that the first Saturday of every month, uh, we are going to have this a new group meeting for spinners. So bring your spinning wheels, your um, drop spindles, whatever you got, bring your wool, and then between 2.30 and 4.30 on those days, uh, join us here in the classroom. Um, we'll, we're gonna have a great time together, um, spinning some wool and also learning. A lot of us I know uh, here in this area just don't have that opportunity to do it, and this is an opportunity we want to give to people. So um, I can't wait to see y'all on this Saturday, I hope, and, and if you have friends that uh, spend, let them know as well. And so now I'm going to throw it over to Linda, who's going to let y'all know about the Brazilian Tots. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited that the um, uh, Brazilian group that I've met with for several years now has a home and we are actually called uh, Top of Texas, Tots, and uh, Brazilian embroidery is um, an art that we want to really keep going and it uses a specialty thread and uh, you buy your patterns printed on this wonderful um, fabric already and we have got some classes scheduled and uh, the Tots themselves and anyone else that wants to join me the second Monday of every month from 1 to 4. Oh, and I'm turning it over to Back to me. Across the two sides. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so another social group that we have meeting here at the shop. Um, it is the Cross Stitchers um, in Texas, and they are meeting the third Thursday of every month here at the shop from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., so the very next one on the calendar then is June the 16th. So they want you to bring your cross stitching projects, uh, bring all of your um, stories and come gather with other people that enjoy the same hobby as you and get to know, make new friends and, and make some opportunities and have a look in the store if you haven't been here before. It's really beautiful and great. So we'd love to see you. Um, next then is Wooly Friends. Um, we're gonna go. I forgot who that's Woolly Friends meets the third Friday of the month. So, coming up, that's June 19th at 1 o'clock. And we have a great time just sharing our projects that we're working on. It doesn't have to be wool applique. We have some uh, hookers in there. We have knit needle punchers in there. <clears throat> we have hand embroidery people doing hand embroidery. But the majority of them are doing wool. And if you're new to wool and you've had one of the classes, please come and be inspired by the people that are making their projects and see how fun they are. And we sh we talk about, oh, did you see this new pattern? Did you see my new threads? What what needle should I use for this? And uh, it's just a fun time. So join us on the third Friday for Woolly Friends. Now, if you want to be a hooker. You need to talk yes. to Dottie. <laughs> yes. And, and we want to also help you with your bingo game. So if we hear the words that are on the bingo list, we are going to to give you guys wake you up so you'll mark it off. So we want you to win bingo. We all, you know, yeah. we just, we all want a winner. And so needles would be maybe one of those words. <laughs> so, and 
Oh, I love friends. doing the hookers night because the hookers are, are oh. wild women that like to come together and not have to match points. We can just, you know, it's even even easy to rip out if we have to. It's just there's nothing that requires thought. We just like to hang out together. So we are at the last Friday of every month at 6.30. And I don't know what's going on with these hookers because they are going to bed early and they're not staying up late. And so <laughs> I expect you girls to come and stay all night so we can greet the sunshine the next morning because we've got to get some rugs hooking. All right, who's next? We have Sip and Oh, Sip and So, me! Yeah. <laughs> Same thing goes for Sip and So. These girls are going home way too early. And Sip and So is the um, first Friday of the month, which is going to be this Friday at 6.30. And I expect you guys to come so we can at least have breakfast together. And we've yet to make it here past, what, 10.30? Yeah. So I think it's 11.15. 11, 11, okay. <laughs> and that, a little credit. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we need some wild care people that have a lot of stamina. So now we get to talk about yarn alone, not alone. So that is Melinda, who says she can talk without any prompts for long periods of time. Absolutely. <laughs> Knitters and crocheters are typically not those people who work all night long until the sun comes up. Um, it's something we can do alone, but it's so much better when we get together and do it. Um, this shop was founded with the intention of creating a community. So if you knit or you crochet, bring your project. <laughs> Bring whatever you are working on and sit and enjoy the company of other knitters or crocheters. There will usually be somebody here to assist you if you're having trouble with a project. If you don't have a project going, there are patterns and yarns here in the store. Grab some needles and start your project. And I bet you're going to be wondering what Gadget Girls. Gadget Girls. This Gadget is so Girls. Cool. Gadget Girls is so exciting oh, to me. I'm sorry. And I didn't have, I just have to make sure I jumped in there because it is so hard to keep a lot of the notions stocked and it hurts my heart every time somebody, oh, 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 it hurts my heart every time somebody comes in and says, do you have a needle thread? I'm like, no, but we have them on order. So we decided to do a subscription for notions. And, um, so then that way, I, we can order in just the amount of, of notions that we need, and we'll have a box, a subscription box. And so I, there's a lot of details on there. It is a, it's going to be a $25.99 um, commitment per month, and you'll get a box of notions. And then on Saturdays, we'll have it all listed on our class schedule we'll be releasing tomorrow the details to how to go over and use the, de the demo, the actual notions. We've been having a lot of fun looking at all the magazines, looking at books, going to other quilt shops out of town, finding notions so that we can bring some of the best to you each month. So yes. can we go on now to, oh, social hour. Can we skip that? Cause I, yeah, let's skip social hour and I'll come back at the end. Okay. So 3D paper piecing. Okay, I'm filling in for Rachel Rogers cause she couldn't be here tonight and she teaches English paper piecing. And so the project for this particular class is going to be this little bowl that you can throw your little clips into, your needles, whatever it is. It's a, it's a small notion bowl, bowl. And these little side pieces are little hexagons that you sew together to make this bowl. And she will show you exactly how to do that. Now, I took her class, not for the bowl yet, but for, I took her class recently, and I had just tried the English paper piecing on my own and was finding I was not liking it very much because my, my stitches uh, showed and everything, and I'm kind of a type A personality. I didn't like that. And so when I took her class, she shows you exactly what to do, how to what needles to use, what threads to use, exactly how to, <laughs> to do these so that, I mean, if you could see this up close, you cannot see a single stitch where she has put these together. So she will also be able to show you how to do this exactly the same way. She's a great teacher. I encourage you to come. Yay. All right. And then treasures, Ginger, you get everybody that's not here. Do you want me to go no, grab one? No, Brazilian. 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 Oh, good. Go get your treasures. You're, okay. you're good. I'm ready now. <laughs> okay. Do you have a treasures? I do. Oh, no, I don't. No, no I don't. Okay. No. Are we still on? Yes. We're still yeah. on. Oh, we're still on. <laughs> um, we are talking about Brazilian embroidery again. And um, to tell you a little bit more about Brazilian embroidery, it is a three-dimensional embroidery. 
and you're using all rayon threads um, and they are hand dyed and there are different uh, seven different weights of thread and we do have a class coming up the 11th of June that's right around the corner and this is called Primavera oh what am I doing <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is called Primavera, and uh, it is a, a project that we're doing, and we have had some people say, oh, but that looks way too difficult to start with. I'm a beginner. A beginner can start with this. Um, we also are scheduling a particular beginner class, which will be this. Sorry, I don't have a frame, but we just decided we wanted to do that. But um, this is a, a gorgeous project. The class comes with a printed pattern, all the threads, everything that you need to make this particular project. And if you can do this, you'll be learning several other stitches, which you will use in most any project from now on. And then we will talk with Hidden Treasures. Yes. That's over there. Me again. So first of all, these little things, thank you, are absolutely adorable. And the first time I saw them, I was just taken by them. So. These are called hidden treasures. They are little uh, cases that have a zipper around them that oh you can zip goodness. up. And inside you can keep things, uh, your needles if you want, any kind of little things that you want to put in there. Um, you can hang them on uh, key chains and you can put them on necklaces. Um, each one of them has a little theme. This has a pumpkin and then on the inside it's all uh, little hand embroidery work. Um, they have little treasure kind of hanging off of them as well. This one has a bird. I don't know if y'all can see that. I've got a Christmas with a Santa. Um, this one is the Notions, which is the class that she'll be teaching. It's got a place for you to put your needles in. Um, and then you can decorate them with little thimbles or things that you find. It's got a little um, tomato pin cushion at the top. Um, we also have these. So we've got... Uh, this is such a neat technique, um, and so many people walk in the shop and look at these and just uh, ooh and awe over them, and the class was a huge hit, so I really highly recommend, if you're interested in handwork or anything like this, you will love this class. And Kathy Pink. And Kathy, yeah, and Kathy Trujillo, she's the one that teaches it, and she has such patience. Um, if you think that it's something that you're kind of afraid to do because you're not sure how the teacher I know sometimes some people are scared of taking classes because don't be intimidated. She's the least intimidating person I've ever met in my entire life. And she's wonderful and has a lot of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge, and her work is just beautiful. So um, that class is scheduled for July 20th. So if you're interested, call or come by the shop. Um, next, we're going to do the slip stitch party shop. <laughs> This is a free um, knit along, and we're going to be learning how to make the slip stitch party shawl by Isabella Kramer. And this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous knitted piece. Um, and there, we're going to be meeting four times. The shawl has four major sections and then a couple easy sections. And so we'll, bingo. we'll be learning uh, this beautiful slip stitch pattern. It's called the tulip stitch. I'll be showing you um, how to use lifelines if you've never used those before. I conveniently accidentally dropped a stitch, and so I'll be showing you how to secure those and fix your work. So my stitch is on this little duty right here. And this little, little duty. But this is a gorgeous heirloom type shawl. This is one we'll be working on for several weeks. We'll meet um, every two to three weeks, and then if you're having difficulty, if you're having difficulty reading the pattern, if you have any problems at all, we'll be meeting together and learning how to make this gorgeous shawl. And next we have Carolyn LaRue, and she's going to be talking about the bullseye quilt. Hi. I don't want to spin this that fast. It makes people drunk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be teaching the bullseye quilt. Uh, the first class will be um, on June the 20th. This is a cute, scrappy quilt. You can make it any size you want. The size we're going to make in class is just a throw size. Um, you can do coordinated colors or you can just have it as, as a scrappy quilt. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's so easy. And the best part of this is 
nothing has to match. There's no matching <laughs> seams. There's yes. no matching points. It's just fun and scrappy. You sew it all together and then you cut it apart and then you sew it all back together again. I'm going to turn it over to Janice now to talk about perfecting our points. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfecting our points is basically a technique class, um, and we're going to learn to use two uh, wonderful notions that are in the marketplace. This is called the wing clipper, and it's a fabulous way to make perfect flying geese in 10 different sizes. And so you can make itty bitty ones, or you can make really big ones with this uh, ruler or tool. And you know, when I first got this tool, I didn't think I would ever make or need to make this size of <laughs> flying geese, but I just recently did. And so I, I got out the wing clipper and I was able to do that quickly and easily and perfectly, as a matter of fact. You know, the big thing about the flying geese unit is that it always seems to get chopped off at the point right here. The nose of the goose is always missing in the seam allowance. So that, that tool, we're going to learn to use that, and it's going to uh, uh, give us some points. Also, we'll use triangles on a roll to make perfect and accurately fast, easy, half-square triangles. You know, I've been quilting a long time and I have been teaching quilting a long time and it still <clears throat> amazes me that people uh, don't know about uh, triangle paper because it's truly a godsend for making perfect half square triangles quickly. So these two things we're going to teach in this class uh, and you can use your scraps. We're only going to make one block but you can go home and make a table runner or, or a quilt out of that block, but it's gonna be really fun to just learn new techniques for this class, okay? Now, back to Ginger for Kathy Trujillo's vinyl uh, project bag. So I've got two to, to give. I'm gonna do the vinyl project bag first. Um, again, Kathy Trujillo, she just does the most amazing, beautiful stitching um, work and so this is a vinyl project bag um, you can it's great for your keeping an individual project in you can put your scissors in it your threads your needles you can keep um, your pattern in it with the vinyl um, case on the cover you can have your patterns showing so while you're trying to do stitching and you don't want to pull your pattern out you can leave it right there it's protected um, it just gives you a really nice way to carry things and store things and keep them while you're doing it. You can decorate it up how you need. Um, she, she also said to say that we'll carry some foam that will also help it stand up. So I'm <laughs> no, not really no. sure about that. So <laughs> we'll see. That's a surprise. Um, and you can make them any size. So they're just a really nifty little... Uh, pattern bag, craft, or project bag for you to have um, to carry your things in. Um, so let us know if you're interested in taking that class. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is the Sassy Sideways Garter Stitch Vest, and that is Melissa. She's going to teach that class. Um, she's not here tonight, so I will tell you that this that project, she showed us the, I can't tell you everybody there that was there that night that, that is a knitter. We all said, sign me up for the class because we were, the, the vest is so cute. It's a great way to get involved in making clothing when you're knitting. So, um, <laughs> uh, because it's a really good, easy project, good beginner project. Um, you're going to be using two colors. Um, it's garter stitch, so you're knitting every row. And she's going to teach you how to do intarsia. So if you've ever been interested in learning how to do that as a knitter, um, definitely look into that class. That's um, going to be three, it's three sessions and it begins June 21st. Um, the next one is the Crazy Quilt Project. I'm gonna give this up back over to Linda. Thank you. Um, the Crazy Quilt Project um, kind of overwhelms us, can overwhelm us, but honestly, this is, this way, um, there's a particular crazy quilt technique that you start stitching your background with, which you will stitch on muslin. 
and, and you use scraps. And what you're wanting, of course, is to use really tiny prints because they're going to look floral. And um, you're really going more for the color than what the print is. Um, you also get to use any kind of fabrics you want. We have satins and a um, uh, piece of upholstery fabric, cotton, velvet, just whatever you want to do. When you think of a crazy quilt, we always think of a huge project. So I've made a crazy quilt, which is over there on the wall, and it has uh, Brazilian embroidery in every block. And uh, I didn't really want to do a big project again, so I decided to do something that I could frame. I probably would do a little bit smaller one the next time because you run out of wall space. But also, on the Crazy Quilt, we'll do a lot of dimensional and um, uh, embellishments on here with beads, different kinds of threads and yarns, and laces, whatever you can think of. On this one, I was um, fortunate to be able to get some cigarette silks. Sounds awful, but they're really pretty. Mm -hmm. But apparently, years ago, when you bought a package of cigarettes, you got a free silk. So I got these and made them kind of my theme in here. So you can do anything, put anything in there that you would want to focus. You can even take pictures of your family and put um, pictures of your family, different ones in here. So it's very versatile. All you need to know to do is keep a straight stitch on your machine for a little while, not a long time. And uh, then the fun part is the, all of the uh, stitching and the embellishments. So I hope to see you. The class is scheduled for the 25th of June. And um, don't let it be overwhelming. It really is very easy. And we will now turn this over to Janice. Okay. Um, the Storm at Sea quilt is a very old, traditional quilt. Grandmother, no doubt, pieced it using cardboard templates to cut her fabric and then stitched it by hand. Um, we see it a lot in um, in antique quilt displays as two-color quilts, but uh, we have a, a several samples here to show you that it doesn't have to be a two-color quilt. Uh, this is a dark dark version of the storm at sea. Here's a block with, with two shades of light fabric making the storm at sea. And then here's more than two colors. It does not have to be a two color quilt. This is more than one color. So your scrap box would be your best friend to make this kind of arrangement. Now, a more modern version is this storm at sea using bright, vivid colors, and we're not gonna unfold the entire quilt, but just know that this Storm at Sea transitions across the quilt diagonally to form a rainbow of colors. So if you have a bunch of scraps that are different colors, you can decide how, if you want pink, transitioning to red, to transitioning to <coughs> orange, or whatever, and use up a lot of your scraps from your stash. Now, the thing about the Storm at Sea blocks the, the block itself is only made from two units. So a square and a square, okay, and then a diamond in a rectangle. Typically, this is a very tricky unit to piece because of the angles of to create the diamond. Many times this pattern is presented using paper piecing and then when people open the pattern and they see the word paper piecing, they just go, yikes, and throw it away. And because some people don't like paper piecing. So the method we're going to learn to make the one block in class is to use a, to our tools to make these perfect square and a square and diamond wrecks without any paper piecing so that they turn out beautifully and you don't chop off any of your points. So uh, that's it for Storm at Sea. I hope you'll join me. Now back to Linda with her needle book. Okay, this is a needle book that I made in thinking about Brazilian embroidery stitchers. I should have filled this up with the needles that we use, but I think a lot of you saw Joe's when he brought it in, and uh, he had it full of the needles. And there happens to be a lady here tonight that I made a needle book for, which I thought was much, much prettier than this one. But I'm really proud to say in this one, I used wool from the shop here. 
um, for my pages, and most of you probably know that wool keeps your needles and pins sharp. So I loved having the wool for this. This particular book is about uh, 11 by 8 inches in size, and you will do some kind of little fastener here or a button or something. And it has two pockets, one on each side, and they're very, very handy. I use my needle book almost every day. And then we're going to even add a little extra aim, uh, with a piece of mesh here, and you can drop whatever you want to in there. Um, for Brazilian embroidery, you use particular needles, uh, size of needles, depending on the size flower or whatever you want. So that little card or index that gives us the size of the needles goes in my little piece of flesh there. So, I mean mesh, I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, look forward to seeing you, whoever wants one of these, and they're really, really good to carry, and you don't have to embroider to, to use them. Hope to see you at class, and it is June the 29th. And let's see, we're going to let the pumpkin girl over here. Pumpkin girl. <laughs> that may be my new name. <laughs> so this summer, we're going to be doing this needle punch pattern, and we're just calling her Pumpkin Girl. And um, she's just the cutest thing. It's probably my favorite needle punch that I've ever made. And um, so we'll be, if you've never needle punched before, um, it's super easy. Um, within 30 minutes of a few basic things that you need to know, um, and how to thread your needle and that type of thing, you're ready to go. Um, it's a really inexpensive, fast, fun, fun hobby, a fun craft, and um, I, it's really fun to do seasonal things and set them up in your home. So this pattern, we actually reduced, it was, this was a huge needle punch. If you want to do a huge needle punch, I'm, I'm so your friend, but I did not want to do a huge one. But the pattern that we're um, getting in, if you, I reduced the pattern for the class that we're doing, but if you wanted to enlarge the pattern, you could even do um, a rug like Claudie did. And so it's just such a fun, versatile pattern. I think it'll be great in our homes this fall. Um, so that's it, and the class is going to... What kind of thread did you use? This is just a cotton DMC, but you can also use the Baldoni thread. <laughs> But it's really a fun hobby craft. So, will the uh, needle fit in your needle book? No, okay. I don't think so. But maybe. Put <laughs> <laughs> in the pocket. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> but we could try. We could try. <laughs> so now we're going to go to Modern Hexies. Who is doing that one? Okay, okay, Janice is doing that one. Okay, so the Modern Hexie class is going to put a new modern twist on the old uh, traditional hexagon quilt. You know, the Grandmother's Flower Garden, I guess, was our first real exposure to uh, hexagon quilts. And actually, I have my grandmother's first quilt, and it is a Grandmother's Flower Garden. But uh, some of us don't have that much time or, or can't be that tedious. As Kathy pointed out, you know, Rachel teaches the do it by hand method. Well, this is for people on the go and they need to do it a little bit quicker. So uh, we're, we're gonna uh, work on one uh, about 18 to 22 inch uh, pillow or wall hanging, it'll be your choice. And then after, after class and you feel confident with the technique, you can use it for any project. Like uh, I made a table runner for my uh, entryway. And so, but the technique is so simple, you shouldn't be afraid because many times people will look at it and go, oh gosh, I could never applique all of those on there. Well, applique is a word. <laughs> <laughs> little hexes are made from two and a half inch squares so if you have a mini charm pack a charm pack a layer cake a jelly roll 
or just want to pull scraps uh, from your stash, it's going to be great. We're going to need 41 two and a half inch squares, and it's easy peasy. If you can bind a quilt, then you can create this hexi, and then then we'll come back and we'll uh, put them on our top. And I promise it will not be painful. <laughs> it won't. And you'll love the result, I think. So join me for Modern Hexi. Okay? Now, let's see. Who's up? English paper piece. Okay. So, again, uh, showing for Rachel Rogers, this is a, the project that she has used to make a small mat. I guess she will be using the, her technique for the English paper piecing. These particular things will be hand sewn and she added a decorative stitch here and sewed down her binding, probably with her Janome sewing machine. <laughs> This, uh, the decorative stitches, of course, on, on the Janome sewing machine. And uh, so M this will Was be... that the M17? Ah! <laughs> I'm not sure whether it was. Or not, but it probably was. So. And if you haven't seen the M17, it is the machine to own. So. Uh, and Claudie and the staff here would be happy to show that to you. But this uh, is just a fast, quick project, uh, wonderful gift, and no previous English paper piecing knowledge or skills required. She'll teach it all in the class. So, Perfect. Okay, hook in, 1868 hook in. Okay, so the 1868 hook in. I'm going to start talking like an auctioneer because our director said we're going long. Are we no, going no, long? it's only been 30 minutes. Oh, it's 30. Oh, it's okay. 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our thing. This is exciting because I have been kind of like um, not a very kind teacher. I've been making all of the students do tiny little rugs and not letting them branch out and try big ones. So it's time. I think you guys have all graduated to big rugs. I know it's exciting. Now, and this comes in three sizes, but I want to do a hook along with everybody, and hopefully we all do the same ones. I can. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this whole thing. This is 1968. It's it's was designed by Polly Mimic, and um, I would never finish this in my lifetime, but you might. <laughs> and I love it because our sweet little friends in Tyler, Texas at the Nimble Thimble Wooly Fox is the ones that own this pattern and we love to support her. So we are thrilled to host this in August and we'll put welcome fall in with the 1868. And I hope you guys will join us because it's a way to grow. There's not anything difficult except just the size and we can do a smaller one and a middle size one as well. All right. Can y'all walk that closer this way? The lights making it where you're they can't yeah, see it. Yeah, it's really hard to see these. How's that? Th does this make me look skinny? <laughs> <laughs> 1868. Bring it. Good year. See if y'all, the, yeah. There we go. There you go. That's better. Okay. All right. It gives a better idea. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can, can you focus in on my, um, not, my not head t-shirt? No, it will not let me focus in. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, it's probably mm -hmm. best because you want to see my tummy. Okay. Um, baby steps. Baby steps. No, don't. No, no. Turn that scarf. Turn that scarf. Doggone it. This class call is called It Only Looks Hard because I think this is an amazing uh, scarf, cowl, whichever one you want to make it. It is done with one skein of yarn. It is a mixture of wool and silk. It is soft. It's mm -hmm. luscious. And it is nothing but a two-by-two two rib. If you finished your first knitting class, you can make this shawl. I will teach you to drop stitches on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't even need a duty. We don't even need a duty, Parker. <laughs> <marker. laughs> this is a sewing machine. Yeah. This is a single class. There is one trick to this. And again, it's one skein of yarn. I think it's <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful scarf. Come join us for the class. You can do this. <laughs> Next, we will go to Janice. Okay. Okay, so uh, I have a class called Fun with Fusible Grid. And so you're probably thinking, what in the heck is Fusible Grid? 
Well, so it is interfacing, okay, with lines drawn on it, grid, grid lines, and then it has fusible dots on one side that we adhere our pa patches to. If you spend any time on social media, then no doubt in quilting feeds that come by, you have seen this quilt, the embroidery flower quilt. It is a free pattern by Till the World. Okay? And so uh, this entire quilt is made with two and a half inch squares. All right. And, and so some people have just pieced it straight out cut out all the squares and sewn them together. Other people that I've seen po posting that they used fusible grid to, to put out all of their squares and lay them on there and just get the colors right and then they fused it and then they sewn it. Okay, so why is that a, a fun thing and why would we even want to do it? So in class, we're gonna make a granny square block. And so this traditional granny square block, if I cut out the squares and I piece them like it's I'm supposed to, I would have 34 seams, okay? By using the fusible grid, I have narrowed that down to 16. And the most important thing is, all of the intersections are perfect, absolutely perfect, and none of them were pinned. So we're going to, uh, that, that was a, on a one and a half inch grid. This is a two, two inch finished grid. And we're in class, we're gonna make this size just so you'll get the hang of it. Notice it can be scraps uh, just to make this block to get the idea of what it, how it works, okay? Because then it can be adapted to other quilt blocks, more uh, any traditional quilt blocks that are square, but also with the incorporation of half square triangles in there. And so getting perfect points and sewing less seams is a what I consider to be a win-win. So that's a fun with fusible grid, and there'll be two sets of classes offered for that. Hey, Janice. Yes? So when you cut that fusible grid stuff, do you use scissors? <laughs> well, you certainly can use scissors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. But you can also use your rotary cutter. <laughs> Just all right, so now Claudia's going to get all patriotic on us. I love following Janice. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 um, I started the sample 20 years ago. And so I just have to say that we usually rarely get past the strip poker part to get to the actual quilting on that night, but it is so much fun. So uh, we are going to make a paper piece flag quilt in theory, and, <laughs> but we want, and, and, and really, we just want you to bring your red, white, blue scraps, um, two inch strips, and we will, I promise you, you will have fun. You may not go home with a quilt finished, but we are gonna have a good time. And we will actually be playing strip poker and separating and dividing up and, and getting our strips all mixed and, and rearranged with each other, and it's, it's a fun night. Anyway, all right, so that, that's the excitement. I hope you guys do come to the patriotic um, flag class just for anything. It's just to get a break and have fun. No, don't come with the, any expectations of, of learning. <laughs> 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 so this would be a great time to transition to babysitting. <laughs> okay, the next class is called Baby Steps to a Baby Sweater. It is intended to guide you step by step by step and let you make your first sweater. It is a five class class. And we will make this Aww. darling little baby sweater. Sizes are anywhere from three months to a year and a half, I think it goes up to. Um, it has two versions. This is what they call the boy version. <laughs> this is what they call the girl version. The difference being the girl has this cute little pico trim hem on it. Um, and the boy version, I just changed the colors because I didn't have enough of either color of yarn to make the sweater. So <laughs> you can make do with what you've got. Uh, this is the Juniper Moon Pod yarn. It looks strange, which is why I picked it up in the first place to work with it. It knits up beautifully, 100% cotton. That's what we will use in class. If you know how to knit and purl 
come, let me take you by the hand. We can teach you to make these baby mm -hmm. sweaters. The only difference between this and a big girl sweater is how many stitches you have to work with. <laughs> so come join us. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn it over to Linda. Okay. I don't have a um, model to show you on the um, summer tote that we'll be doing in uh, July. Um, there's a, we're, there will be a picture in your little um, count, um, class schedule here, and I will have the project in hopefully next week. I have already packed the pattern today <coughs> to go to retreat tomorrow, and that's where I intend to get it made. It's um, a really nice size. You can use it as a purse or for project, and the whole outside all the way around has pocket, so it's... Um, really handy for a project bed. So I hope some of you will decide to take that and um, hope to see you July the 8th for that class. And then I will send this over to, who's our color from the heart? Kathy. Okay, Kathy. <clears throat> okay, in all of the years that I've taught classes or helped in quilt shops and everything, I have found out that one of the most difficult things for people especially if they are relatively new to the quilting world, is picking their colors for their quilts. They don't know what goes together, uh, or if they find things that they think will go together, they may be kind of dull because they don't have a popper, what we call a popper in there. And so I'm going to be teaching a class, and we'll be using this book, Color from the Heart. And what we will do is make uh, five little mini quilts and we will be uh, learning the different uh, theories of how colors go together and everything. It won't be any big projects. Uh, you know, they're small. This is the biggest one right here. And so it is a small project, um, but we will learn the different kinds of techniques of uh, putting colors together. Uh, we'll learn about the color wheel, which within itself is just pretty darn boring. <laughs> but uh, but when we're making these and putting those theories into practice, it turns out to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I hope you'll join for that. It'll be five classes, and we'll be starting that in July. July. So, okay, I'm going to turn it over to the drop spindle. That's me. But you got to make sure you get her. Is that Yoda? It's not Yoda, it's Grogu, and he is not on the bingo thing, so don't bother looking for him. Um, he just travels with me to make sure I stay safe, so um, he guards my wool. Um, the beginning drop spindle class, so I remember when uh, my first DFW Fiber Fest, I went with my friend Melinda, and I saw these women working this thing, and I thought, what are they doing? And I asked, and they said, they're spinning yarn, and I said, I never had any intention of ever doing that. <laughs> and a few years later, I find myself buying a spindle, and then a few months later, two wheels. Actually, I have two spindles and two wheels. So. Um, I would consider a drop spindle your gateway drug into the <laughs> true spinning wheel world. Double bonus. Duty. Um, that's what happened to me. It could happen to you, but it might not. The great thing about a drop spindle, a couple things. It's inexpensive compared to the cost of a spinning wheel. Um, wool is very inexpensive. So depending on, um, this is a pure alpaca, but depending on you know what you do what you mix it's not it's it's very reasonable um, you can get into dyeing if that's something you want to do later not me um, but the drop spindle itself it's a lot of fun I can do it in the car not while you're driving but <laughs> if you're the passenger it's totally fine um, but you can spin it. I, I did it on an airplane you can take it with you anywhere it fits in a very small bag um, and then you can go ahead and just start making some yarn, make it a hat, something. I mean, spinning spinning it to make a sweater is definitely doable. I would recommend maybe the wheel at that point, but the drop spindle, it is a lot of fun. It's super relaxing, and please come and, and join us. It's going to be just a one class. It's on Saturday, July 30th. Um, 
All you need to bring with you besides yourself is a drop spindle. And then we will, and, and the great thing is if it doesn't work out, like it doesn't look like you think it should, it's called art yarn. So we can, we can make things with art yarn. So it's a win-win for everybody. So please look it up, join me if you're interested. And now I'm going back to Linda for the poacher's bag. Okay, this, I hope you can get a, a good picture of this. This is called a poacher's bag, and it's made with wool, which I'm so excited about doing. I actually found this pattern in Branson um, last year, but we didn't have a shop here that sells wool. So I didn't get any fabric, but okay. I wanted the pattern and loved the, the bag. It's really more of a purse. And so now that we happen to have a shop that carries wool, I brought my pattern out. And we are going to have a class on this, and it will be in August, August the 10th. And uh, hopefully we'll have this made very quickly, and I'll bring it in the shop. And hope to see some of you in the class. And then we will talk to, um, who's Janice? She's our wool applique person. Okay. Oh, sorry, people, I'm ah. not trying to make the break. What? Oh. I just told him I wasn't trying to make him drunk. Oh, back to the board. Oh, we are. <laughs> okay, I hope that you will uh, consider joining me for wool applique. Uh, we had a lot of people interested when the shop first opened, and people learned how relaxing and fun it can be. You know, it's that word applique that gets people, I think. They just seize up because they... They, they think they can't do this needle and thread thing. And yet, um, if you can bind a quilt, you can do wool applique because it's a simple whip stitched edge uh, and no preparation has to be done to the edge of the applique itself. So we start off by making, a, we in class, this is our class project. It's, is that a pin cushion? It's a pin cushion, yes. <laughs> so it's a small, and doable project and you can finish it uh we won't finish it all in class but you'll get started and you'll learn all the techniques and uh, that basically you need for wool now the thing about wool applique <clears throat> i've been seriously doing it i guess for the last 15 years my first exposure to it wasn't good because the style that i was taught was that style and that's what you need to do and that style wasn't my style. And so I spent a lot of time in class talking to you about choosing your style and the right background for you and what you want to use it for and the threads that you want to embellish with or not embellish with. And, and so, you know, we can put wool on, on a lot of different other fabrics. So here's an example of wool on wool, okay? So you can put it on wool. Here's an example of wool on cotton, okay? I don't have an example of wool on flannel, but here's wool on a, a cotton that looks like denim -y or linen like a fabric. So you can put wool on just about anything that you want to put it on. And so I would I want to stress that you get to choose your style because primitive is not everybody's style. You may be a Sue Spargo girl with and like bright colors. And so there's a place here for you to learn how to do a Sue Spargo quilt if that's your thing. So join me, and that's August 13th for Wool Applique. It's a one-time uh, three-hour class, okay? Now, where are we? Oh, the new beginning, beginning, beginning. beginning. Okay, so we will have a beginning quilting class again in um, September, and it's basic uh, cutting and piecing <laughs> for beginners. And so if you're new to quilting and or you know someone that wants to learn to quilt and they've asked you to teach them and you don't really have time over there, <laughs> just send them over here and we'll, we'll help them out with a very simple get started pattern that uses fat quarters and they'll learn how to cut and how to piece and uh, hopefully get them going. So that's in September. Okay. So we, we've been listening to a lot of your requests and we try to meet the, the needs that, that you've been pointing out for us. And one of them was machine embroidery. And I, it's like finding a unicorn, finding somebody that feels comfortable teaching machine embroidery because there's so many different needs for different machines. And 
and especially with our Janome, finding somebody that will actually honor our Janome. Woo! So we're excited to have found our unicorn and Dottie Newakert is going to be helping us with a, an embroidery club and an embroidery group to get us all together so that we can be working on um, mug rugs and, and activities and just even getting comfortable with our machines. I think Ginger and I would agree that we're intimidated by the embroidery machines and so oh, we man. keep putting it off but we're going to we're jumping in there and so we're excited to have D Dottie um, join us. Um, Janice has some other exciting stuff that's coming up for the fall. We're just kind of gilding up with some fall materials. Okay, so I'm excited about this for several reasons. We're going to do a stitch along uh, for the, uh, from Sue Spargo from her Fresh Cut book. And so this will be a free stitch along where we all get together and uh, make our blocks and show each other what kind of stitches we use to wear and maybe we change things up a little bit. But as I told the group that uh, agreed to do this with me, I said, you know, ac ac acquisition of the parts is 95% of the fun. So we we're are going to get to uh, acquire all of these ribbons and threads and wools to make these beautiful blocks. So watch the newsletters for th that'll be starting in September. Okay. Uh, now, it's Melinda. Melinda's turn. Yeah. I have a strip of the month that will be starting this fall. Um, it is knit blanket, but it looks intimidating. That is one of those things. We start out with little bitty strips like this one, which is not intimidating at all. And that's the whole purpose of the series of classes is to take you one strip at a time and when you are finished, you'll have a beautiful color work masterpiece. Um, there was a block of the week class we started two years ago, three years ago. And COVID hit. Um, and COVID hit as we were in the middle of it. If you were in that class, we will be getting back together. Get your squares out, whatever you have finished or have not finished, we will finish that. But not in my living room. But <laughs> not in Claudia's <laughs> And not all together at one time. <laughs> one block wonder. Okay, coming up in the fall, this is the book we'll be using. And what you do is take one fabric to make what is turns out to be some pretty amazing quilts. This is, well, Claudia, you're going to have I'll be happy help to help me hold this because it turns out to be pretty big. So this is a poinsettia, poinsettia oh, fabric that is one fabric and the way we cut it wow. up and put it back together, it makes this oh, wonderful dear. kaleidoscope effect. Wow. Yes, and it, they are fun, fun, fun. I am addicted to them. I have fabric for, I won't tell you how many more because right down here <laughs> on the floor I have four, uh, but I have, I'm, I'm a, a fabric collector when it comes to these things. Any place that I find a nice print, I buy the fabric. Uh, also, it can be made, and I've given lists uh, to Claudia of some panels that maybe you just can use. She's uh, she's <laughs> misplaced my list. Misplaced her list. Oh. And she made a special trip to give it to me. <laughs> I'm making a list. Okay, let's do it this way, Claudia. Bring this in. Okay, so this is six panels. So again, it's taking panels and doing the same thing with it and ending up with kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope blocks in your quilt. And like I say, I'm addicted. I love these and I love teaching. All the seams are laying so. flat too. I'll just say that from the side. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that coming well. up. That's coming up in the fall. Claudie's. Uh, on alert to get fabrics in so that we can yep, uh, no do pressure. this. No pressure. So we'll have that. We'll be right up tomorrow. Up tomorrow. <laughs> mm. uh, we just giggle. I have a nervous giggle, and it happens when it's like the least um, appropriate time. But so, if you have more, do we want to see more? I have more, but we, no, I'm not going to hold the show. Okay, all right, all right. Well, and then I am in the process of looking for some really good army blankets for a fall project. And, and um, it's a fall bag by Kindred Spirits. And I'm, I actually have that finished, but I don't have it here tonight. 
Um, but there, we have some fun things planned for fall, and, and I hope you guys are we're, you know, anxious to get through summer, but enjoy summer. And uh, what, what am I missing? Oh, we, we have, have another one. We have two, two more. So we need to um, have Mary show you her, her sample for the fall as well. This is called One and Done. This is one ball of Noro. It's a silk and wool yarn, and it's beautiful. And so it's one yarn, one ball of yarn. It's one stitch. It's a crochet stitch. And you can finish it in probably like one week of evenings just sitting. It's a very fast shawl to make. So we're calling it the One and Done. And unlike this shawl, which takes a little bit longer, this one is just super, super fast. And I think, and we're trying to find different colorways of this yarn. And so you'll hopefully have several different choices of colorways. You, it's again, just one ball of yarn. So these colors transition nat naturally. You don't have to sew in ends. It's wonderful yarn and it's very, very soft. And so it'll be a fun shawl to do. And back to Linda. This is the Poppins bag, very, very popular bag among quilters. Um, we did have a class on this last Saturday, had a wonderful class. It was stuffed in here. I don't think we could have gotten another person in, but it was so fun. And um, this particular bag comes in three sizes. One pattern is for the large bag. Another pattern is for two sizes, the medium and the small. I do have the medium size bag down here um, in the shop and I just made it out of a panel. So you can use a variety of things to make the Poppins bag and it really is a fun bag to make. I think I've made five now. And like I said, you can make different sizes. So we will have that coming up sometime this fall. We'll have it on our schedule. The Poppins colors, everybody was making a bag over the weekend and they, every color way was beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I think the last thing we want to end up with is just I want to explain uh, a, a new um, group we're going to start called Social Hour. And it's really to thank you all for your time and, and your investment in our, in our shop. Social Hour is to honor the Janome owners. And I do feel like Janome has been underserved for a long time. <laughs> Dottie Newkirk has, bought, has agreed to help me, and, and we want to give you support with your machines, and we want to have a social hour every month where, where our high-end Janome buyer, uh, machine buyers come in, and we will give you discounts, and we will give you opportunities, bobbins, and things like that, so that we can learn about your machines more, be more confident with your machines, and use accessories more in your, with your machines. And so... Um, in the shop, we will be having our new schedule all printed and available for you. And once I navigate Mon Chimp Monkey or whatever that ape guy Mail is that has MailChimp, Mail Mail I will be emailing you hopefully the newsletter as well. So here, but anyway, you know, I can say things like that because I'm middle-aged and menopausal, right? Okay, what else is that it? Can we end here? Go back HR over the bingo me? just so oh, that bingo. everybody realizes oh, yeah. now. Oh, the bingo. What about, okay, so I think we should have had a blackout because I hopefully... There were several. There was not... <laughs> Everybody's a winner. We wanted everybody to be a winner. And so um, I may need to call the bank and let them know there'll be a run on all the merchandise. And you know, so we'll see. But with 10% off for all of you that got bring those, bring them in. And we can't wait to see you in the shop. Ginger, are you anxious? Do you have anything left? In the I, I'm, I've got to go home and get some rest because of all the people coming in tomorrow with the bingo cards. <laughs> I'm a little anxious. Are you going to be here? <laughs> no. Thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. We just have had a lot of fun, and I hope you guys have had as much fun as we have. Is there any other words of wisdom? Come shop. Be Come safe. Shop. It's a fun place. Yes. yes. You guys have a great evening. Bye. 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 Bye.